Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar, Tile Grout, Caulk, and Care and Maintenance Solutions. This event, brought to you by Tile Magazine, is sponsored by MAPEI. I'm your moderator, Heather Carter, Editor-in-Chief of Tile Magazine. Thank you for joining us today. Today's presenter is David Mowry. David joined MAPEI in 2002 as Research and Development Group Leader. After 10 years in R&D, he accepted a position in MAPEI's Strategic Marketing Department as Business Manager. Currently, he is responsible for MAPEI North America's grout, caulk, and care and maintenance product lines. He is also responsible for new product launches within these same product categories. David ensures products being sold to both MAPEI's commercial and retail sales channels are meeting the expectations of our diverse customer base. Don't forget to submit your questions, and later in the program, our presenter will address as many as possible. Today's event is being recorded and archived on www.tile-magazine.com. And now I'm excited to turn it over to today's presenter, David Mowry. Thank you, Heather. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for participating in this webinar today. Let's get right to it. Key objectives. First, we're going to look at the when, where, and why of grouts, cox, and care and maintenance. So when do you use them? Why do you use them? And where do you use them? Uh, throughout the throughout the tile installation process. Secondly, we're going to take a look at common mistakes that are made when selecting grouts and cox and care maintenance products. And then we'll move on to uh, contrasting performance properties uh, of grouts and, uh, versus uh, the cost per square foot, uh, which is very interesting to look at. And finally, we'll finish up with an analysis of 3D cutaways of various tile installations, detailing the job site system look from bottom to top so you can see with a full uh, tile install. Some key words to get out uh, to begin with just so we're all on the same page on, on some of the words I'll be using in the presentation. Working time. It's simply the amount of time you have to apply and clean the grout before it becomes unworkable. Uh, so that's, uh, that is important uh, time. It can vary depending on the grout uh, category. Initial curing time. It's when you can allow foot traffic. A final cure is when the grout performance properties reach a maximum. Skinning is a film deposit that forms on the face of the tile just before initial cleaning. Some people use it as a, a, a barometer for when to clean or start the initial cleaning. Flash setting, uh, when grout uh, that grabs onto the face of the tile becomes hard and sets up in the mixing pellet as well. So it's basically unusable at that point. The next term is discoloration, uh, which is uh, called a number of different terms from shaded or blotchy mottled grout. It's basically a non-uniform color and appearance of the grout itself. It's probably our number one uh, complaint we, we get with grout in general. But effervescence, it's a white powdery deposit from salts that migrate from the surface of the of a standard cement grout. It is specific to cementitious grout or, or uh, original Portland cement grout. Some industry standards uh, uh, to know about in terms of acronyms, uh, TCNA, if you're not familiar with Tile Council in North America, ANSI, American National Standards Institute, and of course, ISO, International Organization for Standardization. Moving on, when looking at the different categories of grouts, we show five here, but the, the blue and the green, the epoxy and the chemical resistant uh, industrial epoxy are typically grouped as one. Uh, they're just broken up into categories or into uh, groups once you get to that category. Uh, there's a non-industrial and industrial grade. The, the industrial grade shown there is the chemical resistant. But starting from the top, standard cement grouts, uh, that's what I'll refer to throughout the presentation as OPC or original Portland cement grouts, OPC grouts. And then there's high performance uh, uh, cement grouts. It's a, a step above the uh, entry level cement grout, standard cement grout. So it's a higher performance, uh, no effervescence with this category of grout. Uh, the next category is premixed or ready to use grout. I'll refer to that as RTU grouts throughout the presentation. And then the two I mentioned right from the beginning were the epoxy category. So now you get a look at the packaging. And if you look at the, uh, obviously what the tall tale sign here is the, the two uh, grouts on the left, which are the powder grouts are uh, in poly bag packaging. So they require water. It's a tall tale sign that uh, they're just powder that requires a mix with water. Whereas the ready to use or the RTU grouts are all ready to use. They require no mixing and no, and no, uh, no, just they're ready to use right out of the bucket. So no mixing is required and no water needs to be added. 
The epoxy uh, reactive resin grouts, we show both there. The non-industrial is our, our care epoxy CQ, and the industrial grade is the care epoxy IEG CQ. So you see the different packagings that are out there on the market for, for grouts. Looking at the OPC grouts first, they meet uh, or exceed the ANSI 118.6, as well as the ISO 13007 CG2WA. And we'll talk about that suffix for ISO in more detail. The W is for water absorption and the A is for abrasion. The curing system for OPC grouts is hydraulically cures. So it's essentially a chemical reaction between the water and the powder that creates the, the cured grout or the, uh, the, the grout itself. There's insulation variables. I've noticed, noticed some that have an asterisk by them that are more of an issue in extreme temperature and humidity grouting. So not all grouts done, uh, grouting is done in uh, ambient conditions. Uh, we, we do a lot of work with home builder market. Uh, those are typically no HVAC when they're doing the flooring. And so that's, that becomes a variable. So, but the number one on, in terms of OPC grouts is the, the recommended powder to water ratio. We, we see that quite often uh, where the installer, where it's a DIY or even a pro installer, are not using, uh, they're basically weighing or uh, mixing to consistency. That's the terminology that's used. And we prefer to have the powder to water ratio pretty exact. Otherwise, if you mix it too soupy, you mix it too stiff, you can compromise the integrity of the grout. So that's very important variable. High performance uh, powder grouts, we've stepped up now to 118.7. This, this grout category has really taken off in the last four to five years. Uh, it's, it's pretty much as a result of the shrinking of the grout joint. I mean, back five years ago, a quarter inch ga gap width was pretty much standard. Now we're down to being 3 16 or 1 8 of being more the standard. So consequently, they can upgrade, the, the installer or the DIYer can upgrade to a higher performance grout <coughs> and still get to basically the same cost per square foot, not quite, but because they get the additional coverage from the, from the smaller grout joint or gap, gap width. Uh, this grout is a, uh, typically it's always a rapid setting grout. What's a rapid setting grout? It's grout that can handle foot traffic in three to four hours, uh, typically. <laughs> and it also is traditionally effervescence free. So there's no effervescence. And that's a function of the chemistry in this, this product. The high performance grouts are typically formulated with a, a calcium aluminate chemistry instead of a OPC or original Portland cement chemistry. And that, that, that chemistry is effervescence free chemistry. Installation variables, again, the same, but less than there was with OPC grouts, but uh, same, same variables apply to a certain degree with these, so with the high performance, but you don't have to worry about effervescence and, uh, with this product. Ready to use RTU grouts. There's no official industry standard for these. I listed ANSI 118.3 and 118.6 because in our technical data sheet, we actually reference these to at least parts of these two uh, test methods uh, in our classification systems, in our uh, TDS. We, we can't do them all, but some of them pass in terms of 118.3 and 118.6. Uh, RTU grouts have evolved a lot in the last five years or five, five to 10 years. Back in the turn of, or maybe the early 2000s or so, they were being, it was first generation premix grouts that were out there and there was issues with them in terms of their technology for being used in uh, like intermittent water installations, like shower installs, that type of thing, where the, the, the grout would degrade over time from that intermittent exposure. Today's uh, RTU grouts have, do not have that issue at all. As a matter of fact, this is one of our premier grouts used in shower, and, uh, shower floors and shower uh, walls uh, as well. The, the product actually cures by dehydration. It's not, a, it's not a hydraulic or a chemical cure. It's actually losing its water to cure. And as a result, there's sensitivities to, to relative humidity. So if you're in, an, like I mentioned, the home builder market before, if you do an install in very high humidity, it's going to take, it's going to retard the, uh, the curing process because it takes longer for it to lose that water that's in the, that's in the system, the, the grout itself. So that's an important thing to know. But there are less variables as product. And bottom line is it, it's, it, it offers ease of use because it's directly used out of the bucket. There's no variations with water to powder ratio, which we discussed earlier, uh, and that's a big advantage. And also, uh, the chemical and stain resistance of this product is 
outstanding. It's basically the same as an epoxy. Epoxy re reactive resin grouts, uh, they're called both, but uh, epoxy grouts uh, subscribe to ANSI 118.3 as well as 118.5. 118.5 is more uh, focused on the furan, F-U-R-A-N grout chemistry, which is sort of not very popular at this point. It's a niche market uh, that's out there. For, uh, we don't make a, a furan grout mape, uh, but it also uh, adheres to the ISO 1300. 007 RG or resin grout or reactive grout. There's two categories or two grades as I mentioned earlier, a non-industrial as well as industrial grade. The product is basically impervious. Uh, I mean, it uh, the stain and chemical resistance of this product is amazing. It's it's probably the most robust uh, grout category that we have uh, within our offering and out there in the in the market. The curing system for this is a chemical reaction. The resin and harder hardener react, uh, which is part A and part B. Occasionally, there's a Part C, uh, for, uh, the way that some manufacturers package this product. Uh, so it's important to get the the ratios correct. I mean, there's they're in the the Pell or the box uh, with the proper ratios, but you have to ensure you get all of the product out and mix properly, as as uh, instructed by the uh, manufacturer. Working time is typically an hour from start to finish uh, for the time you start mixing to the time you start the you need to wrap it up you have about 60 minutes to, at room temperature to, to work with this product 60 to 70 minutes so uh, so you want to have all your washing done etc uh, water is its friend which is strange to think we don't add water to the mixing part uh, uh, aspect of this because it's just a resonant hardener there's no water to be added but the the wash water that is used is important to uh, use a lot of wash water to address what ha can happen with this product, which is haze film residue. You want to make sure you, you re release from the tile face, face of the tile, any residue from the uh, epoxy residue from the face of the tile. There is a health risk. It's about 10% uh, or less, probably more like 5%. Uh, people have an allergic reaction or skin reaction. Uh, proper PPE would handle that. Uh, but there's some people that literally can't be in the same room with epoxy grout. So that's something to consider as well. So what makes grout necessary for tile installations? It's spacing and is a barrier. Uh, those are the key, the key things. It fills a gap that's uh, it's part of the TCNA standard as well as the ANSI standard. So that's an important specification. Right now, the, the, gap, the minimum gap width is 1 16th. It has to be at least 1 16th of, a, of an inch. There's issues that can occur. Uh, there's a term called tinting, which is where if there's not proper separation between two pieces of the tile, they'll actually tint up uh, and raise above the, the floor surface. Uh, and also cracking can occur as well. When you have tinting, you're gonna have cracking for sure. That's an that's a, uh, adverse situation to have. So you wanna make sure that you have your grout joints in place and using spacers to set that. There's an aesthetic function to grout as well. <laughs> grout frames uh, and serves as a either complementary or contrasting color in tile design. So it's important that, that uh, the aesthetic function is considered as well. So we just had our first polling question. Uh, so hopefully you'll participate in this. It's very important. We like your feedback. Uh, what have been the most common problems you have experienced with your grout installs? Uh, there's effervescence, discoloration, cracking of pinholes, Haze film left on the face of the tile or flash setting. We really would like your input on that. I see some <laughs> some answers popping up there. It's interesting. I don't think you can see that, but I can. <laughs> You'll see the poll here shortly after you place your place your bets or do your vetting. So I think they're uh, the moder moderated out right now. I can go ahead and. Uh, Go to the next slide, which will allow you to look at the results. Uh, not surprisingly, discoloration, which is our number one concern. It, actually, I'm surprised that cracking in pinholes was so high. Uh, a lot of times that happens with an unsanded grout, like a Portland cement, uh, OPC, uh, unsanded Portland cement grout, it can occur. It's not that a common occurrence in others, but pinholes can occur. But uh, that's interesting results. So we'll go on to the next one. Selecting the right graph for your tile installation. So that's what we've been looking at. There's some key parameters we have to look at. We have to decide 
ask yourself some key questions. The interior or exterior, what's, what is it? Because that's going to that's gonna dictate which grout they use and, and how you react to it. Are you going to do a professional installer to, to have your tile job done, or are you going to do a, a DIY or like a backsplash or something like that? A dry area versus intermittent versus full immersion. Very important question, and we'll get in more detail about the what we call the uh, environmental classifications set by uh, TCNA that's very important to look at later. And obviously, residential for commercial, there's different times that uh, are different. Uh, those are the two scenarios that we deal with. And that's going to, whoever does it, whoever doing the install is going to have an impact on um, whether it's uh, uh, the, the amount of time you have to put the, the area back into service and what have you. The, the last one on the list there is back of the house, commercial kitchens. This requires a specialty grout that we're going to talk about. It's a, basically it's an industrial grade epoxy grout that's required for that application uh, because they're using uh, oleatic acids or fatty acids in these commercial kitchens and and then it's good getting on the floor and that deposit along with what we call no wash enzymatic cleaners, which is very common right now from Eco Ecolab and a few others. Uh, it's that combination deteriorates grout if it's not the proper grout. So looking at workflows, uh, first at Portland Cement, the OPC grouts. And we're going to start from upper left uh, to lower right, uh, from red to red there. If you look across the top, you see insulation location, insulation type, and tile types. So when you see that most of these grouts, most of my pay grouts anyway, uh, ascribe to or are acceptable for interior, exterior, residential, commercial, and even even the different tile types, porcelain, ceramic, or natural stone. There's exceptions. I mean, if you introduce submersion or immersion, pool, pool, spas, that type of thing, you're down to just your powder grouts and your epoxy grouts. The RTU grouts are not immersion grade at this point. Uh, the um, the Carepoxy AGCQ is specific for industrial, uh, heavy industrial. But going down below to the uh, bottom part of the screen, you see the division there between OPC grouts. They divide up in sanded and unsanded based on joint width. Uh, if it's an unsanded, it requires one eighth inch or less in terms of gap width or joint width, and up to five eighths, one eighth to, up to five eighths for the sanded. So that that sort of differentiates the the sanded from the unsanded just based on gap width. And the rest of the parameters there are ones that are pretty common for for both products, so they're consistent. And that's the uh, OPC. Moving on to high performance, you start to see in, in the bottom area of this, uh, of this uh, flow chart or flow workflow, you start to see more parameters show up, like the effervescence free, the rapid setting capability, the no sealer required capability of this product. It's an all-in-one replacement. Instead of being uh, requiring uh, one A for left for sanded and and, and one A for greater for unsand or vice versa, unsanded one A for less and sanded one A for greater. In this case, we, we run the range of width uh, on gap width from one sixteenth to three quarters with one product. So it's an all, all in one replacement for both sanded and unsanded. And then of course it's a one eighteen point seven. Going back one uh, to RTU grouts, it's sort of the same thing again. Uh, just focusing on the bottom, where we get differentiation with this product is in the color palette. At the end, we have three different products that we offer: a Flex CQ, a Flex Color 3D, and a Flex Color Design. For the Flex Color CQ, which is our our benchmark product, that uh, our workhorse product that we introduced back in 2013, we offer our full uh, 40 color palette. The Flex 3D was introduced in 2017, and it's a, it's a specialty grout that's got iridescent and translucent properties, which makes it quite good for backsplashes, metallic uh, inserts. We get sort of like a, a metallic look from that product as well via the special effect. And the newer product just recently introduced is Flex Color Design. It's unlimited palette because we do custom color matching for that, specific for larger commercial jobs and national contracts, not for not for DIY. The epoxies, uh, same thing again, uh, looking at the flow chart, uh, you guys will get these workflows in the PowerPoint. 
and where it where it actually divides up is where it separates at the at the very end of the workflow between non-industrial grade and industrial grade. So as I mentioned before, if you have enzymatic cleaners in combination with fatty acids, you need the industrial grade epoxy. So how do certain grout types differ from other types? Uh, it's one easy way to differentiate them is a mixing step. I mean, we just talked the OPC grouts require a water or ad, uh, liquid admix to be added to, to, be, uh, to be used. RTU grouts do not require any water, uh, where the epoxies do not require any water either, but it's a chemical mix, so you have a two, two components. So it's easy to quickly differentiate them. If you look at the manufacturer to manufacturer variations, there's, there's differences in formulations, even within the same family. I don't think our competitors' uh, OPC grout is identical to ours. It, it, they have their own nuances they focus on in terms of features and attributes, just like we do. Uh, they're all subscribing to the industry standard, hopefully, uh, which is what we do on our end. But uh, that's, that's what differentiates. Common mistakes made, probably the first and foremost is uh, selecting grout uh, based on cost and not based on need. That's that's a big no-no. You want to you want to make sure you have the right grout for the job, uh, for sure. Uh, not considering the insulation environment, we talked about earlier. That's very critical. You have to ask yourself these key questions, uh, and water exposure is very important too. And do you need stain and chemical resi resistance? That's that's some grouts offer that, some do not. Uh, and then of course, the, what what type of tile are, is being used? Is it glass, porcelain, natural stone? Those, those all make a difference on which grout you select. So what can go wrong with grouting, not just in extreme temperatures, as the title says, but this, thing, this can go wrong at room temperature as well or ambient conditions. But I mean, effervescence, this gives you a visual on effervescence here on the top graphic. So you see what that looks like. It's a, that white precipitate we defined earlier. The discoloration, it's the shader to model. Our number one complaint we get is that, that, that look. Typically, it's, it's an issue more with like the OPC or the original Portland entry level grouts and, and less so with the higher performance grouts. Uh, soft grout, that, that can occur for a number of reasons. I gave one example earlier that was the not subscribing to the proper uh, uh, powder to water ratio, weighing the water, that type of thing, or you, at least using a metered vessel or container to make sure you get the proper water based on the, the uh, instructions on the, uh, on the uh, product label. Uh, and then, of course, all these things, cracking being the last one, but all these things can lead to uh, performance, compromised performance and physical properties. 15 degree rule. It's a rule that, uh, it, it's a good rule to look at, when, again, when you're doing exterior grouting. The, the recommended grouting temperature range is from 50 to 95 F uh, by most manufacturers. That's the case with my pay. Uh, but there is a rule if you take the, the temperature up 15 degrees above 70 at 80, 85 degrees, uh, as an example, your working time, if you were at 30 minutes of working time, you dropped that by 50%. You're down to 15 minutes. So that's that, that really has an impact on your initial wash time. Uh, so that's something to really take in consideration when doing hot weather grouting. And the vice, the, the, what, the, the reverse is true in terms of uh, 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 cold weather grouting. Uh, you lose, you'll actually, it will require 50% more time to cure out for each 15 degrees above, uh, below 70. So online grouting and troubleshooting tools are out there. Uh, I left the link in here for you guys. So to, once you are able to download the PowerPoint, uh, it's, it's a great uh, troubleshooting guide that we have online. There's others out there. This one's very well done. I do recommend you, you reference that. You see all the things we just talked about in terms of grout discoloration, effervescence, et cetera. So our second polling question, so please participate. Which grout feature and benefit is most important to you? Color consistency, effervescence free, stain and chemical resistance, ease of installation, or color selection range? Please uh, provide your votes. We want to hear from you. Ah. Not no surprise here so far, but okay, we're seeing some changes. <laughs> I'm able to see it real time. This is real time voting, polling, I should say. Sort of lining out now. And I'm going to uh, 
give it another minute or so, another second or so. A few more votes coming in. It's, I'm going to go ahead and stop the polling. Uh, I assume it stops it. It's interesting. I, I, stain and chemicals resistance is very, very high, uh, even higher than color consistency. Well, that, as I mentioned before, that brings you to RTU grouts and epoxy grouts. So if that's your main concern, those, those are two categories you'd want to focus on in terms of your grout selection. Tile industry standards are very important area that we're going to talk about. Uh, ANSI and ISO set the set the specifications for grouts uh, throughout. 118.3 uh, is epoxy spec. 118.5, as I mentioned before, is epoxy, but more focused on Firan grouts. We do occasionally reference some of the test results on 118.5 for epoxies as well. 118.6 is OPC grouts. 118.7 is your high performance. This 118.8 is basically not very popular. It's probably the least used of any, for sure. Uh, it's a modified epoxy uh, emulsion grout. And, and what that is, is a mixture of uh, uh, OPC grout or Portland cement grout, powder grout, along with epoxy. And that, that combination mixed together, they forgo water and use an epoxy uh, hardener in, in there to achieve that grout. Very few manufacturers are producing that. Uh, it, it's, it's not very popular. They were trying to achieve a, a chemical and stain resistant uh, uh, powder grout if you will, and I don't think they did that good a job on it. But looking below the ISO results here, you, you, they use suffixes. The WAF is the, uh, the, as I mentioned before, is a water, reduced water absorption. The high abrasion is the A, and the fast setting is F. So, and the RG is the resin grout. So those are the, the key ISO and TCNA, or ANSI. TCNA sets the ANSI standards, so that's why I reference them. Just quickly going through some of these. This is from our TDSs for our original Portland cement grouts that we produce, our Caracalla products. The big differentiator here that I'll focus on is down here on the ANSI specs. You see under water absorption, it's got to be less than 10%. This actually is specific to the our Caracalla S or sanded grout. If you look at our Caracalla U, which is our unsanded grout, that, that parameter there, that test result is 18 or less, and the specification is 18 or less. So it's a big shift for between sanded and unsanded in terms of water absorption on this specification. Uh, that's important to note because, and it's important to note as we go on to the high performance grouts. In this case, with the 118.7, we're down, we're down now to 5% or less water absorption. Some of these grouts in this category can go as low as 1 to 3%, uh, you know, in terms of water absorption. So it's, it's a very more, it's a much more dense matrix. Uh, with the calcium aluminate chemistry versus the OPC chemistry. So we get a, a, a little tighter matrix, uh, resin matrix in there. Comparison of costs, it's interesting to look at. I think I mentioned this earlier, but the, the total cost when you compare an ANSI 118.6 OPC grout to a high performance 118.7 is only three cents per square foot. These are average pricing. That's not, there's nothing specific about this price. This is an average estimated market price. Uh, if you've Factor that out to a thousand square feet, you're at thirty dollars per square foot or per thousand square foot. Thirty dollars is not a big uh, upcharge for uh, achieving effervescence free and achieving more color consistency than a OPC grout. So that's that's an important point to note. Looking at the RTU grouts, as I mentioned before, there's no official industry standard on it, but we do apply a few test methods from 118.3 epoxy and 118.6 uh, Portland cement, and, and it, it passes those specs. But the focus on this product is on its chemical and stain resistance. It's, as I mentioned before, it's, it's essentially the same as an epoxy grout. So it's really, really uh, robust in terms of stain and chemical resistance, which a lot of people voted for earlier. Epoxy grouts, uh, ISO and ANSI standards, uh, this again, as I talked about, was less than 1%. Uh, Absorption for this product, chemical resistance is extremely high. Uh, it's the Cadillac of, of grouts if you can handle the, uh, the skin reactivity issue. And there's, there's some challenges with, uh, with working with this product. It, so in some cases, in some 
installs, especially with like quarry tile, which is sort of textured, uh, quite often textured. It, it can be challenging to, to lay that down. And usually you're talking about uh, a thousand plus square foot in the commercial kitchen. So it's, it's pretty challenging at, at times. But on a backsplash, I personally have used it in my home uh, quite often because I think it's a great, great product for that application. Price per square foot for, for all grout types, just focusing on the far right column, cost per thousand square foot. You see there's a big disparity depending on the grout uh, category you're talking about. It can range almost to $500 for uh, industrial grade epoxy grout uh, to do a thousand square foot, you know, to cover a thousand square foot, just based again on average wholesale pricing uh, or retail pricing in this case. You still see that, uh, that the, there's not that much uh, difference between a high performance powder grout at 70 versus a Portland cement at, at 40. So that $30 difference is still there. TCA and environmental classifications, they were established in 2011, I believe. Uh, and it's a great system because we've, most grout manufacturers now use this system uh, to designate what their grouts and also cocks uh, do in terms of uh, meeting these standards. Basically, it's just, uh, it's, it's res is for residential and com is for commercial, obviously, but you, you have different it, levels. Like for instance, res one would just be a, a dry application uh, where res two becomes intermittent or not quite intermittent, but uh, a potential moisture exposure uh, where res three is intermittent. Res four is full, full uh, exposure, you know, to, to high humidity and heavy moisture. And it goes down their line like that. The most recent one just added, I think in 2017 or 2018, was Res 7, which is the residential and commercial submerged for fountain. So if you have that status, uh, that's that's the top you can go. EGA um, EGA 171, which is set by TCNA, which is a it's for movement joints. Very important that you understand that movement joints are required, uh, and th these are the parameters for it. Uh, for interior, uh, residential, or interior, regardless of residential or commercial, I believe it's plus or minus 25, or very, every 25 feet, excuse me, in e each direction. Uh, and then interior, if there's actual sunlight exposure, we bring that down to 12 feet. And that's simply because of the potential for expansion, contraction to be greater with, uh, with direct sunlight or moisture. Exterior is eight to 12 feet in each direction. Concrete slab, substrate, definitely in each direction, 12 feet. Movement joints are required uh, for change of plane areas, and that's part of the EJ, EJ-171 spec. A closer look at that, there's a direct link between uh, EJ-171 and ASTM C920. The C920 is referenced throughout the EJ-171 spec. Uh, ASTM C920 is pretty much of a spec for uh, silicone sealants and hybrid sealants. In contrast to uh, uh, siliconized acrylic, which are caulks uh, that, that don't it's described to ASTM C920. I have a slide on that later. Uh, they, they meet a different standard, a lower standard. Uh, but the specs you see on here, the different types, grade and class, as well as uses, are defined on this spec. In the case of silicon silicon, it can be used both exterior and interior, uh, whereas uh, acrylic caulk is typically only interior usage. So I think this is our final uh, uh, polling question. Which is most important to you when deciding which grout to use for a tile and stone installation? Cost per square foot? Type of tile or stone being used? Industry standard status of the grout? Availability to purchase? Or type of installation? Well, here we go. Please, <clears throat> waiting for a little bit, a few more responses out there. I like what I see so far. Keep them coming. Okay, we'll move on. I think I got pretty much, uh, pretty good sample in there. Uh, heavily weighted towards uh, type of insulation. Great answer. That's that's the correct answer if there is one uh, for sure. Um, I mean that's what that's the first thing you, and the last thing you, you need to look at 
uh, before you decide your grout color or your grout type. So it's very important. Moving on to caulks and sealants and care and maintenance. Uh, less on this than I did on grouts. Uh, so for the sake of time here, but uh, we'll look at, as I mentioned before, there's an ASTM C920, mainly for silicones and hybrid chemistry. And there's an ASTM C834, which is restricted, uh, more focused on siliconized acrylic or acrylic caulks. The, within the ASTM C920, there's a category called heavy traffic or movement joint uh, sealants. Our Mapacil T, one of our products in this picture you're seeing here, that subscribes to that, it reaches that status. So it has a uh, shore A of 35 or greater, 35 to 38. Uh, 25 or greater is, is, is T1 grade, so it can be used in heavy traffic. That's not just uh, uh, pedestrian traffic, it's vehicle traffic as well. Uh, adheres to EJ171 is also this, the, the specification for heavy traffic. There's other parameters in, within EJ171 that has to be reached. And of course, Seal and seal is what cocks are and sealants are all about. Just a quick overview. I mean, the, the, what you see here is my pays two offerings. We offer the siliconized acrylic. We offer 100% silicone. Uh, the branding is what it is here, the care cocks versus the Mapasil products. But if you look at the siliconized acrylic, you see there's very a lot less variable or a lot less parameters that we can tout because it's a lower end grout. It's more of an entry level, excuse me, not grout, but cock. Uh, it, it does, it is for indoor use only, but all these products are, and this is extremely important because we want the grout to match the cock or vice versa. They are color matched to our full color palette. So you can get a corresponding cock or sealant to match with your, your grout. Uh, in the case of the Mapasil, the 100% the silicone product, it's interior exterior grade. It's heavy traffic, it's expansion, it passes COM1 through COM7, RES1 through WES7 in terms of environmental specs, so it's top of the line. Now, why should you cock or, uh, versus grout any corner and change a plane? There's a lot of, number of different reasons, so I mentioned a few. You know, the, the minimizes the potential for cracking. I mean, cock is more pliable than, than grout, uh, even, even in the case of our flex color CQ, which is almost like an acrylic comb where you can bend it, but it's still, it's still hard, you know, that, that type of thing. But it, it definitely uh, there's advantages, key advantages to caulking, and that's recommended uh, by uh, TCNA, that you caulk and not uh, grout corner joints and change of plane joints. Uh, you can get pre uh, premature discoloration of the grout, especially in wet areas uh, if, you, if you use a grout instead of a caulk. Uh, so it's, and, and also the adhesion's better. The adhesion's much superior with a caulk versus a, a grout. So it's a key reason to stay with a, a caulk. Just shifting gears a little bit to the tile and stone uh, care and maintenance. Uh, our, our line that we carry is called Ultra Care. You may have heard of it out there. It's, uh, it's in a lot of uh, big box stores and, and a lot of our major distributors. The sealers, uh, typically the way these these care and maintenance lines are handled. They're, there's typically like four categories. In our case, we have sealers, finishes, cleaners, and problem solvers. And taking a look at sealers first, it's all about the chemistry. I mean, we have both aqueous and solvent-based uh, 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 sealers in our, in our offering, product offering. Uh, and you see the various chemistries out there from the fluoropolymer being, and tripolymer probably being the most popular today but some of them, uh, because of their uh, molecule size, they can penetrate into uh, smaller spaces, like some of the porcelain tile can actually benefit from using a, a fluoropolymer type of uh, a sealer on it. Uh, and also water-based uh, versus oil-based staining, uh, it can be both or it can be one of the two. So that, those are critical parameters to, to look at with, with sealers. The water beating test, as the graphic shows there, is a quick and easy test to check the efficacy of the of a sealer. It, it, after you apply it, you want to try this water beating and make sure you get a nice full bead uh, or beads out, out, out on the uh, surface of the uh, of the substrate of the of the tile or stone. Finishes are more topical. Uh, <clears throat> we have them. It's a it's low gloss or high sheen, so the sheen is what differentiates finishes. Uh, the cleaners, it's all about the pH. 
inorganic uh, spills or stains are, are best handled with a low pH or an acidic cleaner. Whereas organic type stains, and we have another slide coming on that in just a second, require like a high alkaline or high pH uh, type of cl uh, cleaner. Problem solvers, it's all about the problem. I mean, literally, they, they're, they're engineered or formulated to address specific problems, haze film residue, uh, re everescence remover, grout discoloration. We have a, a grout uh, refresh product that allows you to recolor your grout, uh, your grout to uh, where they refresh it to the same color or recolor it to a new color uh, with easy, easy application. Soil types and matching cleaners, organic soils are defined as fats, greases, uh, that type of uh, that type of product, and also molds and yields and bacteria. That's best handled with a high pH product, as it sta states down here. And then the in inorganic soils, which are more the rust, lime scale, uh, shower water deposits, hard water deposits, that type of thing, should all be handled with a uh, with a, a low pH or a acidic type of cleaner. Uh, the we do offer neutral cure, cures and most most care and maintenance companies do as well. These are sort of uh, multitasking. They can handle both uh, both ends of the spectrum in terms of types of stains, and, and they're very versatile. But if you have those specific stains, that's the way you want to look at this pH. This next slide sort of gives you some ideas of how, how we need to pay attention to, to pH. Uh, you know, it seems seemingly a safe household items can damage delicate natural stone. And that's definitely true because there's a lot of household remedies that you see out there for bleach and ammonia and, and what have you. They're, they're typically diluted with water. I know in the case of a low pH vinegar, there's one out there for four to one ratio of water to vinegar, which is supposed to be used for removing haze film, grout haze film. So, you know, we have our dedicated haze film removers too, but uh, it, you can do a household version of that. One thing to mention is is the lime lemon juice down the bottom there where it talks about acid etching. We cannot control that with a sealer. You can seal that marble or stone uh, uh, countertop, you know, and that's fine, but you're going to have an issue if you allow lemon, lime, or any of these low pH products, even grapefruit juice, it's two and a half to three and a half on the pH scale. Uh, to set for a period of time, it can actually etch into the to the stone. Uh, 3D cutaways, a few examples on that towards the end of this presentation. Uh, we, we're looking at uh, how we br break this out is they typically have the same features. I mean, there's typically a surface preparation or surface prep, a waterproofing step uh, or layer, uh, a tile setting material, stone, of course, or tile, uh, and then grout caulk and care and maintenance products. That's, you'll see this layering here as we go through these slides. Before we get into that, I, I had this one slide that uh, that came up uh, from a job site that we did in, in New York City, which back in 2019 for the Empire State Building, where all my pay products respect. And you can see the, uh, uh, the use of these products that were I call out here are high performance. Uh, uh, cement grout was used there, uh, the Ultra Color Plus FA. And there's a the link in here that you can click on after you get the PowerPoint to see more details on this. So looking at our first uh, layering or 3D cutout, this is an issue with high traffic. It's a you know it's a commercial lobby area, so you got high traffic, you got pivot areas, you got traffic patterns going on. So starting with the concrete slab or the uh, the original subfloor, you got cleavage membrane, which is simply a a divider or a membrane that separates the concrete from the modified mortar to uh, allow the, the modified mortar bed to be more free floating. Uh, then we have a, like a bonding primer there. Uh, the Mapasonic 2 is a, uh, it's a three in one product. It's a membrane that allows for waterproofing, uh, sound reduction, as well as crack isolation in one. So it's, it's multi, multifunctional. Uh, the Ultraflex, which is sort of now being replaced with the Caraflex line uh, is our setting mortar and, of course, the tile and, and the grout and caulk. So you see the whole uh, flow of that. Uh, and by the way, we have all these on our website and more. I think we we, we broke them up into different uh, types. We have one for commercial. We have one for residential. We have one for 
uh, residential high rise. We have one for hospitals and and one for retail and establishments, restaurants, uh, uh, different genres of uh, where you can look at these different layouts. So this is happening to be a commercial elevator where there's there's flexibility, there's pivot areas, there's high traffic, and it's a tile and stone over steel, steel substrate. So we start out with a like a planet creek W, which is just going to improve the bond to that uh, steel substrate and give it flexibility. And then you have your your plywood base, again the bonding primer. Mappy Guard 2 is just like the what we talked about before on Mapa, Mapasonic, where it's a three-in-one product, and then the setting uh, setting mortar, the tile, the grout, and the and the cuck. So they don't differ that much, you know, from from application to application. There's some less layering on some, like this one here. This is we're now we're in a residential backsplash, specifically with glass tile. Uh, a glass tile requires a solution we recommend for glass tile is what we call our P10, which is our brightest, widest mortar, setting mortar. Because you, you, can, you can have issues with show through on these glass tiles of the setting mortar. So you want something that's consistently bright white to, to set into it. Um, and then you choose a flexible grout. So the Flex Color 3D is the one I mentioned earlier that provides a iridescent and metallic look. and it allows basically you like to transfer uh, within the glass so you can pick up different hues uh, and, and, and accent the, the design like this purple and, uh, and gold design back there. And then finally, the map of so 3D is the, is the, the sealant that, that uh, supports the Flex 3D. Interior bathroom floors, uh, another good one here. We, we start with our a subfloor, and then we go into Aqua D, which is a liquid waterproofing uh, with a reinforcing fa fabric on there, and then our setting setting material fired by the tile, the grout, the caulk, and then this time we, we were adding a, a care and maintenance layer with a penetrating sealer on top of that. So moisture and, ma and maintenance is the challenges here and the solutions using water-resistant products, color consistent, easy to, easy to clean. The final one we have, just an exterior pool. Uh, it's basically, it's the planted top. We start with concrete and on a vertical, and, and we're looking at uh, the planted top uh, uh, render mortar and planted top 330 fast, which is a, a fast fast setting product. So we're, our concerns with this is water migration, pull chemicals, effervescence. So you want something high performance uh, that can handle submersion. Uh, the Map Elastic uh, 315 is next uh, along with this waterproofing along with the fiberglass mesh and then your granny rapid uh, in, which is your setting product in, in combination with the ultra color plus fa can, actually allows i think within 72 hours you can uh, you can fill the pool i, I believe that's the application <laughs> to double check that mapasil t is the, the cocker setting uh, the uh, sealant so in summary, a challenge for all of you, uh, it basically, it start with a challenge, uh, you know, for the DIYer, it, it would be if you apply these guidelines, you're going to come up with ensure uh, basically a more beautiful floor or wall installation. And for your professional, uh, professional contractor installer, uh, if you apply IC and ANSA, ANSI uh, standards, uh, you're basically looking at no callbacks. You're going to have less problems, uh, less problems, and you're going to get more referrals and more business. So it's all positive in that respect. These were just a few shots of LaGuardia Airport and a condo we did with uh, a backsplash here as well. Finishing up, uh, we, we will be at surfaces in, in February, looking very forward after hiatus uh, and virtual last year and a hiatus from the previous year, I think, or virtual last year. And we actually made it through January of 2020 before COVID kicked in, I believe. I got the dates right because uh, it started, I think, in February. So we got that in, but we're anxious to get full full steam back in. And we obviously have an invite to come to our booth uh, at that point uh, on February 1st in Las Vegas. And I th just want to thank you very much for your attention and, and attendance and thank Tile Magazine, uh, Heather, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, David, and, and thank you for a great presentation today. Um, oh, thank before you. We have David, 
<laughs> Before we have David address some questions that came in during the webinar, uh, I wanted to remind you that we'd love your feedback in our webinar survey to help improve our programs. And now for our first question. What tile grout would you recommend for a commercial installation that has daily heavy foot traffic? Okay. Well, the first thing that comes to my mind would be an epoxy, uh, our care epoxy CQ, or uh, you know, since it's not commercial or, or it's not uh, back of the house uh, uh, restaurant uh, commercial kitchen, you could use the care epoxy CQ. That's a non industrial grade epoxy. You, I didn't hear anything about water, so. Uh, but regardless, that would be the first one. If, if there's uh, my second choice would probably be our Flex Color CQ, which was an RTU grout that we referenced in this presentation. So that would be a number number two choice for that installation. Okay. Our next question. I am a DIYer and getting ready to install my first kitchen backsplash next week. I am installing three by six inch white subway tile with some black subway inserted for detail. What setting material, grout, and caulk should I use? Okay. Well, that's a good question. I think one of our 3D cutaways was similar to that, uh, where we had a glass tile and it was a backsplash. Uh, but that was with glass tile instead of a, a, a 3 by 6 subway. Uh, I would recommend uh, probably our Flex Color 3D or our Flex Color CQ uh, for the grout. Uh, the setting material, um, probably still go with the P10, which is our high bright white. Uh, but you could go with a white uh, Caraflex product on a Caraflex Super in terms of setting that product. But uh, yeah, and, and in terms of the sealant, you could go either way there. Uh, if there's no water exposure, uh, you could go with the silicon acrylic, which is our Caracock line, or you could upgrade to the uh, Mapasil T, which is 100% silicon. Uh, either way would work in that non water uh, area. Great. Next question is, what is the best care and maintenance tile and grout sealer for my marble countertop and glass tile backsplash? Well, there's two different substrates there. So the marble uh, countertop, I would probably recommend, uh, you can go for water-based uh, penetrating sealer uh, for that. Uh, you could go solvent or water, but I, I think because it's more of a porous substrate, marble, that being marble, uh, the water base would be fine uh definitely we use that and apply multiple coats until you get the proper water beating and, and just follow the instructions on that as far as the glass tile uh, backsplash i would you know it's not really necessary to seal the backs or the glass but uh it would be necessary to seal the tile the the grout depending on the grout you use like for instance if you use flex 3d you don't we wouldn't have to seal it but if you did a uh, care color you unsanded that would require a sealer. Uh, I'd recommend a sealer, especially in a you know for stains and chemicals uh, in a in a, in a kitchen environment. So that's that's the ones I'd recommend there. Back to the the marble. I think it was marble countertop that you said. Uh, as I mentioned before in the presentation, that that's there, even though you seal that and you want to seal that to just prevent staining, uh, there is a situation with very low pH products, uh, food products that can cause acid etching, uh, that we cannot, uh, a sealer will not prevent that. So that's important to note. Okay, great. During the curing process, how do you prevent separations or gaps at the top of the tub to the tile surround? Uh, separations and gap in the, uh, can you repeat that? I, at I the top of the tub to the tile surround. Top of the tub to the tire, tile surround. First thing, I, I would use a caulk. I mean, uh, you want to caulk it instead of uh, grout it. Uh, if you're talking about a change of plane, if I understand the question correctly. So if it's a, you know, if it's a change of plane from going from the edge of the tub up the, the side, the, you definitely want to go off a caulk for the reasons we talked about earlier. And, and in, in this case, 100% uh, uh, silicone and not not an acrylic siliconized because of the water okay. Uh, issue. Okay. Also, are there any drawings related to grout and sealant details at tubs and shower bases in residential applications? Yeah, I mean, there are. And uh, definitely if you go into, and I could have added some of those because I, I probably just, I mean, we probably have over a uh, hundred 
plus 3D cutaways. And that configuration is is on, on there. I think it's under residential high rise uh, in our website. So you, you definitely can look at that layering or the 3D cutaway of for that installation. Okay, touching on the same topic, what is a good transition detail at the floor to the wall of the tub surround? Transition detail? I'm yes. not sure how, how, how they're defining that. To me, it would be like a profile or something, you know, that you would use. Uh, okay. I, would, I don't think it's I don't think it's a product per se, other than what I keep repeating, which is uh, the use of uh, a sealant versus a grout. But uh, I don't okay, know what I. What is the best sealant to use at a shower head finish trim plate? Shower head trim plate. OK, I would probably again, if, if you're talking about a sealant or sealer, you know, that, that's a difference. I mean, if, if you did sealant. I would go off the 100% siliconized, no question, uh, for that. Uh, you know, there's others out there. There's different chemistries. We don't offer that. Like, with, there's some urethane, single component urethanes out there that are good uh, for for bond, better for bonding. You know, in that situation, you may want to look into that. 100% silicone, like we offer, is pretty much the the like industry standard for grout manufacturers to carry 100 uh, silicone as well as in the silicone. That, siliconized acrylic cock so but some of them get into other chemistries i know our colleagues in italy offer like some urethanes and a few other hybrid chemistries uh, that could be used but uh, at least in our portfolio it would be the 100 percent silicone mapa silt okay is there something like the 15 degree rule when it comes to the humidity's impact on work time yeah that's a good question uh, I don't think there is. So it's really difficult to, to pinpoint relative humidity. I mean, I gave the example with the RTU grouts. If you get above 90, 90 RH, 90% uh, RH you, with the RTU grouts, it, it does uh, retard the, the the curing. You know, I don't know that we've ever put a, a sliding scale to that, you know, like a 15 degree rule to that, but uh, or 15% RH to that. But uh I mean, you're starting with ambient at 50, uh, 50 RH, and then going up or down. And I, I've never seen any data on that myself. Okay. Well, that is all the time that we have for questions okay. today. Please join me in thanking David Mowry for his presentation, as well as our sponsor, Mopay. If you do have any additional questions or comments, please don't hesitate to click the Email Us button on the console. And please visit webinars.tile-magazine.com for the archive of this presentation, as well as information about our upcoming events. We appreciate your time and hope you have found this webinar to be a valuable experience. And thanks again, David. Thank you.